Shalom Aleichem, a good Mayed. Today is the evening of the first day of Chalameyed Pesach, Tov Shin Pei Beis, Hey Tov Shin Pei Beis. That means it's Monday and Yud Zayin Toiv Nissen. Tonight, I'm already after Mayed, is, is the Yem Aledis of the Rebbe's father, Ablevik, Chai Nissen. He was born in Tov Resh, Lamed Ches, which is uh, 1878. And of course, uh, 22 years later was the Rebbe's bris on the same day in Tov Reish Samach Beis, 1902 was the Rebbe's bris. And of course this year we're celebrating 120 years since then. Just as the Aleph of Nisn is 120 years since the Rebbe's birth, so Chai Nisn is 120 years since the Rebbe's bris. Um, I heard that the Rebbe said about himself, as funde brus bin gegang in alle mal mit der Jamalke. From the age of my brus, I always was with the Jamalke. And he objected to the photo of him before his upshedden, where he has beautiful locks, beautiful hair. Which the Rebbe's mother obviously took him to some kind of a Photoshop in those days to take this picture. Um, and the Rebbe objected to the publicizing of that picture because you don't see his Jamalke. And the Rebbe said, I always wore a Jamalke from the age of my brus. And the reason you don't see the yarmulke is because the hair was so big that the yarmulke is behind the head. You don't see it. So, um, and uh, there's a shayla vegan, and davar over the vegan malacha. But this is divrei teira. Divrei teira is to use a lotion from the rebbe's teira and from chasidus is malacha sarboim. It's the chavoyim, chavoyim malachas, avos malachas, chavoyim chasarachas. There's thirty-nine malachas in Allah do on Shabbos. And there's a series of less malachas that you're not allowed to do on Yom Tev. And there's an even smaller series of less malachas that you're not allowed to do on Chela um, And of course, those things that are a dovish al hefsid, there's a kulas on Chela Meyed, and so on and so forth. There are yidn who are careful not to write on Chela Meyed. But Divrei Teire is not an avla on Chela Meyed. Even though I've heard that the Rebbe objected to people taking pictures on Chalameyed. And frankly, when I heard about it, I stopped taking pictures of myself Chalameyed, even though Chalameyed is prime time to take family photos, sometimes you get together. Um, but I believe that the Rebbe meant people were taking pictures in order to sell them. Which meant that there was a panasa involved in the printing of those pictures. But taking pictures for personal pleasure, I don't know how the Rebbe would feel about that. I'm not saying he would say it's okay, but I'm not. I, I don't think that was the Rebbe. But the Rebbe said at that time, and this is Divrei Teira. So here we go. This is. I. I hope I'm. I'm uh, within my bounds. This is the fourth shear that we're going to give. We're going to give now Mitzvah Hashem on the capital. Kuf Chafalov, the Rebbe's capital. Esa Eina Elohadim Ayin Yavi Ezri Ezri Mimad Hashem. And today she is in the next two psukim. Hey and Vava, the Shem, the Shem Shemrach, the Shem Silch Yadim and Echa, Yemen, the Shem Shem Kerka Verech Baloila. As I tell you often, especially when it comes to these kinds of Shiurim, I'm literally one class ahead of you. I prepare, I try to prepare. I look up different Svadim, I compile them, I write them up, I organize them. I study them, and then with Hashem's help, I flush something out that's a sheet achida, that's one pshat in the capital. But often I don't figure out the capital until I finish teaching it. In other words, after I gave four or five classes, I have a better idea of what the capital is about. So I already told you in my introductory class that this capital, without a question, is about Shemitah, Hashem guarding us. Because the whole capital is nine psukim. And in five of those nine, there's a mention to the idea of Hashem protecting us. Hashem Shemrecha. So even the beginning of the capital, which is Esa Eini Alahorim Ayn Yavi Ezri, and the answer is Ezri Mima the Shem Eitzesh Ma'ayin V'Ol. It's also about Shmir Hashem protecting us. And I explained to you at the outset in my very first class in my overview class that Shmir can mean to protect you, like Rashi says, Beniget VeYishmerecha Yishmerecha Ben Amazikim. Shmira can mean little to protect you from an enemy, from something which is negative. And Shmira can also mean to raise you up into a place like the idea of Leil Shimurim, where you're self-guarded, where you're so safe, you're in such a 
healthy, grounded, gruntike, uh, thoroughly established place. In Yiddish, the word for thorough and the word for grounded is the same, grunt, gruntik. In English, it's a little bit different, obviously. That you're, you're, you're guarded in a way that you have no connection to what's uh, not good. And I also mentioned the possibility that the idea of Shemitah is, what says in Hasidah, the idea of Laisa said being high, the mitzvah say. Shemitah is that you create a framework. It's not about doing something, it's about creating a protective environment. And the light comes by itself through an inaction rather than a proaction, which is considered at an even higher level. So, I've been teaching the capital, and I've been teaching the capital, I've been learning the capital, and as I learn the capital, my understanding of the capital changes, it, it deepens, it develops, and um, what I teach sort of changes almost from class to class. It, it's a series of classes on one capital, but in each subsequent class, because it's a deeper understanding, it's more than how I plan to teach the class when I was giving the class before. And what seems to have emerged from all my learning and all of my research, and it's based on a Sikh of the Rebbe, which is printed in the Sefer Tehillus Menachem Antillam, that the highest Shmire imaginable, the highest guardianship possible, is when the when the when the guardian and the guarded are one and the same. When Hashem, God Almighty, who was doing the guarding, and the person and his world and his condition, including his difficult conditions, become one and the same. And the code words in this Padic, which are going to denote this, are the words Hashem Tzilcha, the Debish is our shadow. And I'm going to explain to Mitz Hashem as the class unfolds. So there's a Padic in Tilim, Kuf Chafalov, that according to Rashi, it's really the first of the 15 Shira Malas, which is why it begins Shir La Malas, while the others all begin Shir Ham Malas. As all I explained these ideas earlier in the previous class. But this, the spirit of the capital is that the idea, Hashem guards, Hashem protects, and Hashem guarding and protecting is a variety of different levels and aspects. And the deepest Shmira is when the Shmira comes from the world itself, as the world itself is one with Hashem Himself, as is represented by the term by the Shem Tzilcha, the is your shadow, who Kafishi is by the common, as I'm going to explain later. So the way I presented the learning so far is that in the first two Psukim we're looking, we're proactively looking. I'm looking for Hashem to protect me. Beginning with the third Pasuk, you go from second, from first person to second person, or in some cases even third person, that the you're no longer describing the person seeking a shmira, but that the person is being told that Hashem is going to guard him. And the way I explained it to you in the last class, this is a shmira that comes to the person from the world itself, how the world by itself protects a yid. In other words, that in this third pasuk of the capital, al yitam al grecha al yonim shemerach, it means to say that there's a place where God and the world con 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 converge; they become one and the same. This is in Teva itself, like the marshal I gave you from Shabbos Hagodel, and I believe I gave you a second marshal as well, where Teva and Alakus become one. So the nature itself protects, and that's the meaning of the words, like Yonim Shebracha, that your guardian doesn't sleep from the Madrega Vatik, from Madrega where the world and God where the world and godliness are one. And then based on the Tzamach Tzedek, a brilliant twist emerges. The fourth Pasik is of course very famous. He nila Yonim Velayish and Shame Yisro. And there's many questions on this Pasuk. And we resolve those questions based on a Tzamach Tzedek and others. That the idea of this fourth pasuk is that Hashem is descending from the level of Shemitah, where He guards us on a level where the, His guardianship and Teva are one, to a lower level where His guardianship and His and the world are two, and you see the revelation of His guardianship in the world. In other words, pasuk Gimel is a higher level, 
Al Yitam Lamit Al Yach Al Yonim Shemirach is describing how Hashem is guarding us because the world itself and Hashem are one. He in the Yonim Al Yishin Shemi Yisrael is how Hashem goes down to a lower level, to a level of Vishtalshalus, where His guardianship is separate from the world that is being revealed into the world. But of course, the Chiddush in this Pedik is that the guardianship, which is on the higher level, where the world and God are one, is itself descending into. So even though in the fourth apostle, the idea that Hashem is guarding us as He is revealing Himself from outside the world into the world, but the level of godliness which is being revealed is actually the level of godliness which is above the idea of division and separation. What's the pshat here? What's the significance here? What's the idea here? So in the previous class I made mention to what the Tzermach Tzedek explains about punishing Haman and it not just being a tikkun but actually being an einish and so on. I want to talk about this a little bit more and perhaps explain this a little bit better by, by repeating a word that the Rebbe brings in the Sichas, the Fidegar mentions it in the Sichas as well that um, the Rebbe has it in the Sichas that the Friedrich Rebbe was arrested and sat in jail for 18 and a half days in 1927, Tafresh Pei and then he was exiled for another period of time, another whatever, it's four days, 10 days, 11 days until he came home. And then, of course, he realized that he's not free at all, so he eventually made the decision to leave Russia and go into Iceland and so on and so forth, and eventually made his way to the United States, and of course, the rest is literally our history. So there's a talk from the Friedrich Rebbe, from the previous Rebbe. But the previous Rebbe says that in the Maimed of the Rosh Hashanah before, Pezayin Rosh Hashanah, he spoke about Hashgacha Pratas, the calling Shittas HaBal Shem, Tad Baal Shem Tavziu and Hashgacha, and he added that if I had not spoken about the Baal Shem Tev, you and Ashgach and the Rosh Hashanah before, I don't know if I would have been able to survive the arrest. This is what he said. Now, I didn't learn the Maimed Rosh Hashanah Pezayin. I did glance at it. I did try to look. But I have been told that in the Maimed as we have it, it doesn't exist. It's not printed there. Because it wasn't part of what the Rebbe was planning to say. The Friedrich had planned to say, as he said, the Maimed. In the fear to keep his mind, when he said a Maimer Chsidis, he was simply reviewing his father's Maimodim and adding notes. He would call it Chazor, Yechazet, even though it's not Yechazet, the Rebbe Chazet, the Rebbe Zokt. But the Hashgacha Protest of the Baal Shem Tev sort of came to him as he was speaking the Maimer of Rosh Hashanah Pezayin. So the Rebbe once asked the question, what does that mean? If the Friedi Kerebbe would not have mentioned the Maimer of Rosh Hashanah before, the idea of Ashgacha Protest of the Shittas of Baal Shem Tev would not be able to survive the Maimer. So the Rebbe explained it in a Sikha, in which he speaks about other things as well. Uh, the whole purpose of a Rebbe is to strengthen Yiddishkeit, is to help other people. That's what the meaning of the word Nasi and the Shama Klolis. And a Rebbe is, like the Rebbe himself once wrote in describing his own role, our Rebbe wrote, that first of all, it's my Avoida as a Dugmachaya to others, I'm a leader of others. And then there's the Avoida Betur Prat. A Rebbe's Matthias is first of all Klal and then Prat, it's all backwards. A Rebbe exists to serve the Jewish people. So the Rebbe explained the previous Rebbe sits in jail and he can't serve. He's not able to fulfill his purpose on this world. So he asks himself, me and Yomani, for what am I? And the answer could be that there's no explanation. If there's no explanation, there's no reason to exist. If there's no reason to exist, then he wouldn't exist. So the Rebbe says, by speaking about the Baal view of Ashgach, in the Maim of Rosh Hashanah before, it gave him the ability to go through Durach again, Aribitz again, the Maiser, to survive the arrest and liberation. Why? The Baal Shem Tev's view on Ashgacha, as you may know, involves two primary points. Number one, it's a filu al datzach, that Ashgacha is not just on human beings or on Yidin or on Tzadikim, but every single creature has a personal Ashgacha, as an individual Ashgacha. And number two, it's Negei Luklal Kavana Sabri, every detail, the creation touches the greater scheme and purpose of the creation as a whole. These two ideas, when taken together, blow the mind of the greatest person. They're, they're above human understanding. They cannot be understood intellectually. It's impossible to explain logically how every single thing should be central to the entire purpose of creation. It's impossible. In other words, this level of Ashgacha exceeds the ability of one to understand. And of course, the Rebbe has explained this more than once. That's how we understand the difference between what we call the Rambam's view in Ashgacha, and there's many other Rishonim 
who agree more or less to the Rambam, although specifically there may be some subtle differences, that they believe that Ashgacha Pratis is a, almost like a merit system. The closer you are to God, the more Ashgacha you have. The farther you are from God, the less Ashgacha you have. So human beings have Ashgacha, you didn't have a greater Ashgacha, Tzadikim have an even greater Ashgacha. In other words, Hashgacha is almost a reward. You earn the involvement of God in your life by the life that you live. Which makes sense. The more meaningful you are to God, the more of God's meaning you experience in your life. But the Baal Shem Tev says that it's universal, that it's almost equal. Right? The Rebbe has Sichas, where the Rebbe says otherwise, but for the, practically, technically speaking, every single, single creation is the same Hashgacha. It's way beyond understanding. So the Rebbe said that the previous Rebbe said that I as a Rebbe for so many and so many days, like the Rebbe said while he was fashikt in Kastrama, while he was exiled, he said to Elichaim, he looked at his holy hands and he said, If I cannot write about little children learning Torah, why do I need hands? And it's, it's tragic to think that the Rebbe spoke those words because we can't possibly imagine how those words may have affected him physically. Because the words of a tzaddik is once the words are spoken, the words are spoken. Because the Rebbe said, if I cannot be involved in spreading Yiddishkeit, I have no mitzvah, I have no existence at all. But the fact that the Baal Shem Tev Shita and Ashgacha is beyond understanding is an echoma, is a is a consolation, is a resolution that the Hashem knows what He's doing. Even to me, even to a Rebbe, to Nasi Yisrael, even though it doesn't make any sense, he knows better. That's the idea. So by mentioning the Shita Sabal Shem Tev and Ashkocha Pratis in the name of Rosh Hashanah, he raised himself to a place where he's able to understand that even if he doesn't understand, the Eibishter knows. That's basically the idea. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to observe that there's two levels in Ashkocha Pratis. There's the Ashgacha Pratis of the Baal Shem Tev, there's the Ashgacha Pratis of the Rambam, and as the Rebbe says in many sikhs, they're not really contradictory, they're not mutually exclusive. They're mutually inclusive, they're speaking to two different things. They're a logical Ashgacha, an explicable Ashgacha, a reasonable Ashgacha, Ashgacha that you can understand, versus an absolute Ashgacha. And in this capital, this idea plays out very strongly. Because in Pasa Gimbal, when we say we're talking about a Shemitah that's happening from the higher level of Ashgacha, where God and the world are one, and then Hashem comes down from that higher level to the lower level of that His guardianship is revealed and revealed specifically to the Jewish people as opposed to the whole creation because it's on a level where the, where the, where the Shemitah is reasonable. And this is, again, this is my understanding of what the Tzemach Tzedek says on Pasuk Dalet. If you look in the Tzemach Tzedek in the original, you'll see he says something different but similar. That Kvayachol, the Shmira of Hashem, on the higher level, descends to a Shmira on the lower level, which separates Yidin from the rest of the world. That the Hashgacha begins to make sense, that the Shmira begins to make sense. Or that the Shmira shows on a closeness between creation and Creator, rather than seeing an abs- being an absolute reality that Hashem is shamed on everything. And this is a further understanding of the evolution of the Psukim. Al yitam lameita glecha. Al yonim shemrech is describing what Hashem protects, but He's protecting from a level which is completely above being revealed in the world. So we, we benefit from His Shemitah, but let's say it in this way, we don't see the favoritism of His Shemitah. And that he goes down from that higher level to the lower level. He near the Yon of Elisha and Shem Yisrael, that he's specifically the guardian of Israel. In a way of the Yon of Elisha. How I explained it in the previous class, why first is the Yon and then is the To reveal a Shmir on the Jewish people, where the Jewish people see and appreciate the unique relationship they have with him. I already mentioned before that the real source for this approach is what we're going to be learning now in Pasakeya. The Shem Shebrecha, the Shem Tzilcha, Yad Yemenecha. And the Rebbe Sicha on the words Hashem Tzilcha. So I haven't fully uh, defended the approach that I'm taking. That the third part, Ayit Alamei Taglach, Yonim Shebrecha, is a higher Madreg. And in the Yonim Alisha Shem Yisrael is coming down from a higher Madreg to a lower Madreg that the Shemir should be revealed. 
But now let's continue. Let's read Pasuk Hay, and you'll see how I prove that this is the Pshat and the two Pesukim before, based on how the Rebbe is going to explain this Pasuk Hay. Adeshem Shem Recha, the Ebesh that guards you. Adeshem Tzilcha, the Ebesh that is your shadow. Al Yad Yiminecha, on your right hand. Al Yad Yiminecha, on your right hand. The simple meaning of the Pasuk is Hashem protects us. And the way he protects us is we're creating a shadow over us. He envelops us. He surrounds us and protects us and creates a shadow. And this enveloping protectiveness of this shadow empowers our right hand. Ayad Yimenech, that we do what we need to do. It's like in Chumash, When Nidin left Mitzrayim, there's four steps. The first is the technical Yitzir, removing them. And then there's Vihitzalti. Vihitzalti means to save, and Vihitzalti also means to provide a shadow. You take people out of a, a dangerous place, and then you shadow them, you envelop them with a protective energy. And the same idea is in the word Hashem Tzilch. The Shem Shem Recha, the Shem guards us. The Shem Tzilch creates a protective shadow around us, which manifests a Yad Yemenecha, the Ebishter's right hand. But the Rebbe has a Sikh on the words Hashem Tzilch, which led me to, uh, so to speak, uh, understand the Pshat and this Pedic in a whole different and in a higher way. The meaning of Hashem Tzilch simply means Hashem is our shadow. It means he shadows us. But there's a Torah from the Baal Shem Tev and the Mezich HaMagid. That Hashem Tzilcha means that Hashem is to us like shadow is to the movements of man in sunlight. If you're walking in the street and the sun is shining, every step that you make, the shadow moves with you. you the shadow shadows you. As you move through space, as you walk across the earth, the light of the sun hits against your body and on the opposite side creates a shadow. And of course, the brighter the sunlight, the darker the shadow that's going to be created by your body will be. So Hashem Tzilcha, the Hashem is your shadow, means this, Api Chasidus, that everything that we do, Hashem creates a parallel in shadow, meaning we do an act, this act creates a shadow, and the shadow that it creates is Hashem, Hashem Tzilcha, David reflects us as our shadow. Just as when we do good deeds, there's a concept in Chasidus and in Kabbalah called he mirrors our actions. One of the ways of indicating this idea that he mirrors our actions is this pasuk Hashem Tzilch. Whatever we do, he shadows. And you have this Nigeris Atshuva and Pedigid Beis and so on. The significance of this mashal of a shadow. Says the Rebbe, but there's another idea. It's the same idea, just quoting a different pasuk. That the Mishnah says in Pirkei Oves, Da Malamay Lameimach. And it's both in the Baal Shem Tev, but the name of the Baal Magid, the name of the Baal Shem Tev. Da'amalamayla, you should know everything that happens on Haim Yimach is a reflection of you. That whatever we do down here is reflected on high. It's like you have in Pasha's Mishpatim and in the Rambam and other Svarim, and Tachas, and Agok, and Livin, and Sasapir, and Chetzim, and Chetzim, and Chetzim, that the Ebesh is like a mirror that reflects our actions. Da'amalamayla, Mimach, whatever we do is reflected and mirrored from on high. So if you want to know what's going on up there, examine what's going on down here. Our actions create a supernal reaction, which is a reaction to our action, or a shadow, or a reflection, or a mirroring of our action. So the Rebbe says there are two different ideas. One based on a Pesach, Hashem Tzilcha, the other based on a Mishnah, that say the same idea, that speak to the same idea. So the Rebbe says, but what's the difference between the two? Why does the Bashanta the Magid have to say the same thought based on this Pasuk Hashem Tilcha and based on the Mishnah in Pirkei Oves, Da'amalamayla Mimach? So the Rebbe answers that the difference between the two is that Da'amalamayla Mimach means that everything we do, Hashem reflects in His light. Hashem Tilcha means that everything we do, Hashem reflects in His darkness. Just like shadow is darkness. Like it says in Tanya Pedic Chavav, Tanya chapter 26, where he talks about people experiencing Yisurim. And he discusses the idea of Lekabuli Besimcha, Lekabuli Yisurim Be'ava. And he says the idea that there are people that live in Hashem's shade. The sun is very strong. And because the sun is very strong and it's being blocked, it creates a shade. And this shade is a darkness. And the way that darkness may play out in the lives of people, this is very, it's painful, it's hard. And the Alter Rebbe says, Those who shadow themselves in the shadow in this world 
to the powerful rays of the supernal sun which are going to be revealed when Mashiach comes. So shadow denotes godliness in darkness. And that's the difference between the Maimon Mishneh, Dama Lamayla Mibach, and the meaning of this Pasuk, the Shem Tzilcha, they're both describing how what we do creates the reaction from on high. But on the Mishnah, Dama Lamayla Mibach, what we do creates a reaction from on high in the form of revealed light. And in this Pasuk, the Shem Tzilcha, what we do reflects from on high a darkness. The darkness means you don't see it. It's concealed, it's hidden, it's black, it's dark. But like it says in Hasidus, Yoshes Chayishach Sisri, Ochenata Kel Mestatad, in the darkness you have the essence of godliness. And Hashem Shemrecha, Hashem Tzilcha means that the nature of the guardianship of HaKadosh Baruch was that He's your shadow, meaning that the way He guards is that the guardianship is invisible. Because it's in the Madrig of Chayishach, which is higher than Ayr. Or the way I would like to explain it to you, it's when the guardianship comes from Teva itself. When Hashem arranges in His world, the Hashgach HaPratis within Teva itself protects a Jew, you don't see the overt hand of God because there's nothing overt about it. It's perfectly natural, in quotations. But the end effect, you see that this is Yad Hashem, Hashem did it. That is the meaning of the words Hashem Tzilcha. And this, this idea from the Rebbe Siche is what prompted me to explain in Pasuk Gimel and Dalet Together with the Semach Tzedek says in Pasuk Tala, the way I explained it to you that Al Yitel Amezer Yachal Yerem Shem Recha is that the Shmita comes as God and Teva are one, and then he goes down from a higher level to a lower level. He knows the Yon of Elisha Shem Yisrael that his guardianship should be revealed to the Yidden as special because it's coming from the level of light. And in Pasuk he reviews it all. Al Yitel Hashem Shem Recha, Hashem is your Shemir, and you can read these Pesukim in a variety of different ways. But based on what I'm saying to Hashem, Hashem, Hashem is your guardian. Hashem Tzilcha, first of all, is your guardian on a level that you don't even see that He's guarding you. Because He's guarding you and He's protecting you and He's keeping you. Like I told you, again, it says in the pre- I mentioned in the previous class that it says in a moment from the Rebbe Rashab, which I saw with my own eyes. But I have since searched for it in my, and I haven't found it. When I used to learn Hasidus in the moment of the Rebbe Rashab, I used to write notes of quotable quotes, and in one of my svarim I wrote this down that the Rebbe Rashab writes, I thought it was an Ayin Beis, but I can't find it there, that the miracle of Kifsa Achas, when Shiv is a Kamim, Shivim the Eiv of Himish Tameres, the miracle of Jewish survival, which happens in such a convoluted way, which happens in such a complicated way, which happens in the context of one Holocaust and a, and a pogrom, an exit of Kantonism, and the Lile's Dam, and Masoi Slav and on and on and on and on. In other words, it's so concealed, it's so difficult to see the guardianship, but the end is that as Kifsa Achaz ben Shivim, the Ave of Himish Tameres, this one sheep among 70 wolves that is preserved. So the Rebbe Rashab writes in a Maimed that this miracle is greater than all the revealed miracles of Kriyas Yamsuf and Matan Teira and everything. It's less likely, it's less plausible, it's less possible. And it happens in such a way that you can't even call it a nest. You just see the end game that the Jewish people still exist. Am Yisrael Chai, we're here. Like I tell my students all the time, when I was a kid, I remember seeing in a magazine a picture of Shar Titus in Rome. The, the Ark of Titus, which he built after the destruction of the second base of Mikdash, it was an ark which he built for his own fame, his own glory. And some Yid had climbed up on this arch, which is very tall, and sprayed on the words Am Yisrael Chai. So I said to my students, my high school students, my Bar Mitzvah, my Masifta uh, if the Roman legionnaires who marched under that arch carrying the clay base on Mikdash and carrying the hidden away as slaves in chains would have been stopped by some person and told, you should know one day someone is going to come and climb up to the top of this arch and spray on the words, Am Yisrael Chai, and not one of you is going to be around to stop them. They would say it's impossible. And yet it is. Because Kifsa Achas Ben Shivim the Eve Himish Tamer is a fact that Jewish people exist. But it's hard to call it a miracle because it's so full of pain. It's Hashem Tzilcha. It's the Eve as our shadow. It's the godliness in darkness. It's the godliness in concealment, which we don't overtly recognize as godly that holds us. 
the closest thing we come to seeing it is the idea of Ashgacha Pratis within Teva. So the Pasuk says, Hashem, Shem, Rech, Debishta guards us. First of all, on the Madrig of Hashem, Tzilcha, that Hashem is your shadow, which means that the godliness which keeps us is coming from the very highest levels, from the level of darkness which is higher than light. But that the way it manifests is very difficult to see. And the Pasuk finishes with the words, Ayad Yeminecha on your right side. That you mean the right side goes on Gila, goes on Revelation. You may be familiar with the Pesach in Tanakh, which speaks about Mashiach and Tchies HaMesim, but Ta'amed L'Garoch L'Ket HaYamin. Ket HaYamin means the end of time. But it says in the Mepharshim on that Pesach, Ket HaYamin also means the end of the right side, and the Midas HaChesed. Because Yamin means Giluyim. Yamin means the revelation of godliness. It means the revelation of godliness, which, which in, in effect means, which is predicated on the idea that the world and God are separate. And the light of God travels from what God is to where the world is, one thing meeting another. So there's a concept called Ketah Yamin, the end of the right side, end of Gilu. And when you have the end of Gilu, then you have Etzim, then you have what's higher than Gilu. But in this passage, it works the other way. Hashem, Shem, Erech, Adibish, the guards and protects. And the nature of his guardianship is, first of all, Hashem, Tzilcha, that his guardianship comes down to us in the form of a shade, of a darkness, of a blackness, that in Elam it may not look like anything positive, but in fact, it's the ultimate Shemitah, it's the highest and the greatest and the deepest Shemitah, because it's coming from the Ebi himself. Al Yad Yaminecha means how it comes down into Giluyim, how it comes down into Yamin, how it comes down into a godliness which we're able to see and experience the hand of Hashem that guards us and keeps us in this world. That's how I'm understanding Pasuk Hay, and again, this is based on the Rebbe Zasiche, and it's this combination of the Rebbe Sicha on this Pasuk Hay, and the Tzemach Tzedek note on the Yon of Elisha Shemi Yisrael in Pasuk Dalet, which follows Pasuk Gimel. This whole question is, why is Pasuk Dalet after Pasuk Gimel? It should be before Pasuk Gimel, and he explains, in effect, in effect, that you're coming down from Atmos to Giluyim, so this is how it plays out. There's a Shemitah. Hashem guards us and keeps us. And in guarding us and keeping us, there's a lot of aspects and a lot of levels. And basically, the higher level is that the guardianship, you don't even see as guardianship. But in the end of the day, we're here. On the lower level, it makes sense. It's revealed. It's a miracle. You see it. So the lower level's advantage is that it feels much better. The higher level's advantage is that it is much truer. And this is what the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya chapter 26, that La'as said Lavi, that Kol HaMestefevim B'Tzil of Elam Hazeh will be Zeichad La'ev HaVashesh HaShem Eish B'Goros Elam Abo. If we were able to appreciate the God in darkness, we were able to appreciate His guardianship when His operation with us is only within the limitations of Teva itself, La'as said Lavi, we're going to be Zeichad to the Gili of Etz. And then we read Pasuk Vav. Which is interesting. By day the sun is not going to beat you. By night the moon is not going to beat you. So what's the Pasha the Pshat the Pasuk? The Pasha the Pshat and the Pasuk when the sun is too hot, it hurts, it burns you. And the way the Rishayim explained it's too hot and too dry. At night when the moon comes out, the moon doesn't do any hitting. But the lack of the sun and the presence of the moon accounts for a coldness and an increase of moisture. And the implication is that somehow the Yerech has to do with this moisture. And this increase of cold and moisture can bring to all kinds of illness. And because Hashem is guarding us, Yemam Hashem is by sun, by day the sun is not going to beat down on us, and by night the moon is not going to chill us and cool us and give us a negative idea of moisture. But there's a mighty dikit tzamach tzedek on this pasuk, an unbelievable tzamach tzedek on this pasuk which is really wonderful, it's really delightful, it's really special, it's really exciting. And that is that the Shemesh and the Yereach have been used for Avedah Zorah, historically. The sun and the moon have been used for Avedah Zorah, like the Raman discussed it in the first chapter of Hilchas Avedah Zorah Bariches, the whole history of idol worship, the earlier idolaters, the earliest idolaters were not fools. They understood that there is a God, and they understood that He is one, and they understood that He is the only Master. But of the wording of the Rambam, that since they saw that Chola covered, that Hashem gave honor to the intermediates that helped him govern his world, the sun and the moon and the stars and the constellations, so they said we should also. 
And over time, it devolved into what Aved Zara became over the course of hundreds and thousands of years. As the Ramam explains it concisely and crisply and clearly in the first chapter of his laws of Aved Zara. What is the idea? The idea is that Hashem governs his world using tools, intermediates. And some say the reason he's using these tools because Hashemayim Hashemayim Hashem ba'aras asal of the Adam, also by the Hashem it's aras bedeke chav of mazalis, the kadale la kadale kaya. The idea that Hashem quote cannot come down so low was interested in coming down so low. So although he oversees everything, but he oversees it from afar, and his involvement in the lower world is what's called shita for avodah zara through intermediates, through helpers, through assistant gods, through gods with small g's. Like the Rebbe says in the Maimir of B'yem Ashti Osir and in so many other places in Hasidus as well. The truth is that Tashemayim Shemayim L'Hashem V'Aras Nasan V'Adam HaMagbil L'Shavas HaMashpil L'Reis B'Hashemayim V'Aras Hashem is not in the heaven versus the earth. He's above both heaven and earth. And therefore he's equally present in heaven and earth. And he's so great that he's not above being involved in the very little. He's involved in the nitty gritty and the little as well. And the idea that Azov Hashem has ordered Bedeke Chav Mazalis, that Hashem has forsaken or abandoned the earth and left it to the stars and the constellations, is categorically false. He governs the world by himself. What about the fact that he seems to have these intermediates, these helpers, these tools? And the answer is, it's Kigarzam Yada Chaitzab as a, it's like a craftsman who uses a tool. The craftsman uses the tool, is the only entity with will. The tool is nothing. It sits in a toolbox. The craftsman takes it out of the toolbox and uses it to carve or to cut or to hammer and so on. But the tools have no free will of their own. And Avoid Zara in the ancient world, as the Gemara explains it, was a great temptation because people wanted to relate to God, they wanted to have a relationship with their deity. And if he has a form and he has a definition and he's divided, it's easier to relate to, and this is the worst sin of all, the sin of idolatry. You have to believe in one God. And amongst the gods that tempted the Jewish people and tempted the whole ancient world, and in a different way, in an unrealized way, they tempt the modern world because the God of the modern world is the laws of nature. It's the same Aved Zara. It's the same idea that God's not in charge, so-called nature is in charge. They just call it by a different name and it has a slightly different spiritual concept, but otherwise it's quite similar. So the Pasuk says, means that the temptation of idolatry, which is represented by the sun and the moon, will not attack you because of the heat and the sun, or attack you because of the cold and because of the night. So the Shemitah, the guardianship, which exists on these levels of Hashem Tzilcha, and on a level where He's protecting you from a place of darkness, and he's also coming down into the Yad Yamin, protecting from place of light, protects us that Yemam But when the sun is shining, the sun is not going to hurt us. And when the sun is not shining, the moon is not going to hurt us. What do you, how do you understand this? So the basic understanding is that one of the greatest tests to Achtos Hashem is Gili Alakus. Is what we call in our culture Giluim. When godliness is strongly revealed, the light of godliness and the drama of godliness and the power of godliness covers over what we like to call Moir, the source, the essence. And when people live in times of maximum revelation, they can be very caught up in the revelation of godliness and it makes it difficult for them to remember the essence of godliness. Like the famous Moshal, which the Bashem brings. On the post the people come into a palace and they forget about the king. They start recognizing all the decorations in the palace and the beauty of the palace and the order in the palace and the music and the sound and the smell and the taste because the things around the king are so enchanting they forget that the whole point of it is the king himself. Which of course explains the famous historical fact and great controversy the Dafka in the time of the first base on Mikdash. When the divine light was at its brightest and its strongest and its surest, there was such a high frequency of Avedah Zara. And the Gemara says in the times of the second base Amikdash, the Anshakan Sagadela realized that the temptation of Avedah Zara is too strong for man to bear. 
and they removed it. And of course, there's a famous vart which is mentioned in the name of the Alter Rebbe and Yudel Chitrik Sefer. I think I think Pella brings it also that the Alter Rebbe said once that when they took away the Taiva from Avodah they had to put it someplace. And he said, Matas Galeit and Gelt, they put it into money, and then he quipped. I'm not sure if it was worth it. Which is an incredibly powerful statement that deserves a lot of Iyun and Limud and Biur and so on. But when people experience great godly light, the dazzle of the light makes them not see the source. And if they don't see the source, they're suspect, they're vulnerable to Shniyas, to division, not because there's no godliness, but because they're distracted by godliness itself and they see that as a division or as divisions. And that's the meaning of the words, when it's day, when it's bright, when godliness is revealed, like in the times of the first base of Mikdash. And there is the sakona that comes from the sun. There's a sakona that comes from the Mazales, which say, of course Hashem exists, of sure, of course Hashem created the world, but you think Hashem cares about this and this action, or this and this thought, or this and this word? He's too great for that. And therefore, the asking, other of Hashem is others. We think Yechav of Mazales, which is the idea of Shneus, division, duality. Which can be in the level of Shitov, can be even level of Vedazara, and even lower. And the Pasik says that Hashem's Shmira, on the level of Hashem Tzilcha, the way that comes down from the higher level of Hashem Tzilcha to the lower level of Al Yad Yiminecha, and it protects us from Vedazara in times that are light. And the second part of the Pasik speaks about Yerech Bala, the darkness goes on Golis, Nesha, Finstenish. You find yourself in a circumstance, in a time where you don't see godliness. Like the Pasik says, Oh, he says, later, you know, Ein Eid Navi. Ve'ni Tanu Dei Admah. The Rebbe used to quote this Pasuk over and over and over again and always skip, always, without exception, skip the words Ein Eid Navi because there's Yesh Eid Navi, the Navi is the Rebbe himself. And there's an Arichas Vegin Dem Ve'en Kan Amok. But he says, Ein Eid Navi, Ve'ni Tanu, Ve'ni Tanu Dei Admah means we live in a world that you don't see the special hand of God in the life of Jewish people. It seems like the world is entirely Mikre Nikre, the Shoyim gave it in Bay, you don't see the hand of Hashem how it's governing and protecting Tzadikim and Yidin. So that creates a whole new possibility for Rachman al This is the Avedezara that comes from Chayishach, the Avedezara which comes from Helen Behesta. When you don't see and you don't know and you don't experience and you don't feel, you start to get caught up in Teva. You start to be distracted by secondary powers, which is Shnius, which is a division, which is Bedakus and maybe not so Bedakus. The idea of Avedazara. So the Pasuk is saying that Adeshem Shemerech, Adeshem Tzilcha, Yad Yemenech includes Vayareach Baloyla. That even the Avedazara of the Yareach, which operates Baloyla when it's dark, when godliness is concealed, and you don't see the hand of God, and you don't see the favoritism that Hashem shows to the Jewish people, you see only nature. And nature seems quite bleak, quite dark. And you begin to think that maybe all there is is this. So the Pasuk says, Hashem Shemerech, Hashem Tzilcha, Yad Yemenecha, Yerech Baloyla, even when it's dark, you should not be distracted by that terrible thought and remain consistent, remain loyal, remain dedicated to the idea of Achas Hashem, Leon of Elishin Shemi Yisrael. And that's how you understand Pasuk Hey and Pasuk Vav in this Patek. Now, I'm going to finish the class now. Okay? Um... But as I finish this class, I want to review the last two classes. That means Pasuk Gimel through Vav. Because you have basically three Shemitahs. The Pasuk in the Shemitah in Pasuk Gimel is Lait Lamed Riachal Yarem Shemerecha. The Shemitah in Pasuk Dal is Hina Yarem Lishen Shem Yisrael. The Shemitah in Pasuk Kei the Shem Shemerecha Shem Tzor Yad Yemenecha, which results in Pasuk Vav. So to give you a different perspective or a different spin or a different way to say the same thing I've been saying, let's say this. That the first passage, Hashem is your guardian, doesn't even say his name, just as he's your guardian. So you could say two extremes. On the one hand, his being your guardian without a name means he's lower than a name, which means Malchus, the lowest level. Alternatively, his being guardian, which is without a name, goes on Hatzmus. And the first passage is speaking to these two extremes the idea that Hashem guards us in such a way where his guardianship is hidden and concealed. Because on the one hand, it's coming from such a low level, and on the other hand, the level is the highest of levels. The second Pasuk, he's called Shemi Yisrael, the Garden of Israel, of Yisrael, not of Yainke, but of Yisrael. Yisrael is Shema Maila, which shows on Gili, which shows on Lukus. 
which is revealed. So this is already higher than Malchus. The way Godness is revealed from above the world in the world. So from one perspective, it's higher than the Godliness of the Pasuk before, because it's how Godliness is revealed in the world. And from the other perspective, it's how it's uh, in Ishtalshlus, how it's com- coming down into Ishtalshlus. And the third Pasuk, Adeshem Shem Recha, Adeshem Tzilcha, Yad Yeminecha, again, we translated Havaya as Havaya Vatika Kadish, Havaya Deliyela. Especially in this Pasuk, it says twice Hashem, Hashem Shem Recha, Hashem Tzilcha. So whenever you have twice Hashem's name in the same Pasuk, one makes the second into Havaya Deliyela, that the Shmira comes from Havaya, which is completely above Ishtalshlus altogether. And therefore, it comes down into this world, even into the place of darkness. So the three psukim can be seen successively. And each one can be understood in two extremely opposite ways. The first part, let's say the first pasuk is the lowest level, that you don't see the Yad Hashem because the Shemitah is from Chitzenius. The second pasuk is the middle level, that the Shemitah comes from a saying of Giluyim. And the third pasuk, the Shemitah comes from Matzmas. So this is my commentary on psukim Hey and Vav, and in my next class, which will be my fifth and Bepashtos. My last will do yes. the last. Good night.